Let's take our mining garage a step further and make sure that our GPUs are properly cooled, but only when necessary. What is up miners and welcome back to the 3 Fox Company YouTube channel. We all know that GPU mining rigs generate a lot of heat and keeping your rigs from overheating is constantly in the back of your mind if you are a serious miner and if you really care about your equipment. Allowing your GPUs to thermal throttle is never a good thing nor is it advised and it will definitely have a severe impact on their lifespan. I have been involved in a lot of different industries during my career so far and the one thing that all of these industries have in common is their reliance on automation. Yes, automating processes and individual equipment maximizes performance, decreases workload and minimizes waste and most importantly it removes human errors for the most part. Why am I mentioning all of this? Well, keeping your GPUs cool could be a time consuming and frustrating process especially if you are not at your mining location 24-7. Most of us has got full-time jobs and it's not always possible to devote our undivided attention to our money printing machines that cost thousands of dollars. In my case, I've also wasted a lot of electrical energy by running my cooling system when it's not even necessary. So I'm going to show you how I use simple automation to streamline my mining farm, making sure that it's properly cooled at all times and that I do not waste electrical energy. I have a very efficient evaporative cooler installed. This type of cooling units have several benefits and it includes fresh, clean and filtered air to the mining garage and it provides a constant exchange of air. It creates a positive pressure inside the mining garage when it's running so it eliminates dust intrusion. It is energy efficient and it only uses a fraction of the power that a traditional air conditioner unit is using. It is easy and simple to maintain. To make this project possible, I will be using a selection of Wi-Fi switches and monitors. I will leave affiliate links in the description below should you be interested in buying some of these items. Firstly, I will be installing a Sonoff temperature and humidity Wi-Fi switch. I will not have any output wires to the switch, but I will only be using it for monitoring the temperature. The humidity measurement is only indicative and will not be used as a control element. Secondly, I will be using a 4-channel Wi-Fi switch which will be used to interface with the control panel of the cooling system. Once both of these items are installed, I will then connect them to the eWe Link app where I will be able to create a scene or sequence for the controlling of the cooling system. Installing the temperature and humidity monitoring switch is simple and easy. I used a 4x4 inch enclosure to house the unit safely without exposing any of the live conductors. It will be powered by a 240 volt power supply, so I ran a supply cable from a nearby socket outlet and connected them to the voltage input terminals of the switch. After the switch was installed, I drilled a small hole to enable me to route the sensor cable through the enclosure. I initially mounted the sensor on the wall, but I changed the location after I did some testing. But I will explain the reasoning behind this decision a little bit later. After this was done, I had to do some mods to the cooler control panel to enable the 4 channel Wi-Fi switch to be integrated with it. Since the cooler control panel uses push buttons to start and stop the unit, it was very easy to find a workable solution. I soldered pigtails onto the push button switches of the control panel and added some hot glue onto the soldered joints to make it resistant against any vibration. After it was done, I crimped some lugs onto the ends to ensure that I have a neat and proper connection to the relay terminals. In this instance, I'm only using three of the four channels. I will be using the fan on, cooler on and unit off functions, so I will have a spare channel left on the Wi-Fi switch which could be used in the future for something else. Before the final installation, I tested it on the table to make sure it functions as expected. To set up the Wi-Fi switches, you need to register an eWeLink app account, which is very simple to do. Once you have done that, you can go into the app and pair each device. The included instructions are very easy to read and understand. Here you can see that I have the four channel Wi-Fi switch connected, as well as the temperature and humidity controller. I have also paired it to my home Wi-Fi router, so it constantly remains online. If we enter the 4-channel switch sub-menu, you can see that I renamed each channel to suit my needs. As mentioned, I'm using 3 out of the 4 channels and I named it 
fan on, cooler on, and unit off. Now, if we go into the temperature and humidity sensors sub menu, we can see that it displays the temperature and humidity in real time. Now I have different options of controlling the cooling system. If I wish to manually control the unit, I can go into the four channel Wi-Fi switches sub menu and start and stop the unit as I please, or alternatively, I can create a scene which will allow me to automatically control the cooling system without any human intervention needed. To create a scene, we click on scene on the bottom tab. Here you can see that I created three scenes. This is basically three conditions that will determine the appropriate action that will be taken. The first scene is to completely switch the cooling system off. The condition that needs to be met is that the temperature needs to be smaller than or equal to 27 degrees Celsius. Once this condition is met, the unit off output relay will be triggered and the fan on and cooler on outputs will be disabled. The second scene is to switch on the fan only without running the water pump. Once the temperature is larger than or equal to 29 degrees Celsius, the fan only relay will be triggered and the cooling on and the unit off relay will be disabled. This will allow me to run the fan only without the water pump to start the air exchange in the mining garage. If the air starts moving and it is successful to keep the temperature under control, then the unit will simply switch off again when the temperature goes below 27 degrees Celsius. Now let's say that the fan has started but the temperature keeps rising. Then this is where the third scene will be activated. When the temperature is larger than or equal to 30 degrees Celsius, the fan will remain energized, but additionally the cooling circuit will be activated. The sequence will now continuously monitor the temperature. When the mining garage has cooled down sufficiently, the cooling system will be automatically powered off. By automating my cooling system, I no longer have the need to worry about my mining rigs overheating and I do not have to look at my phone the whole day to see what the temperatures are. How did I come up with the different temperatures for each scene? This has been done through trial and error and it will likely change in the future as I do more testing. I basically use my rigs, GPU temperatures and fan speeds as a guide. I'm trying to maintain a constant temperature on the GPUs and subsequently I'm using the auto fan function in iveOS. Once the fan speed of the hottest GPU reaches more than 85%, I note what the temperature in the mining garage is. At this point, I'm starting only the fan of the cooler. I've also noted what the temperature in the garage is when the fan speed of the hottest GPU is close to 100% and uses this to trigger and activate the cooling system. So far, the system is working great and it removes a lot of stress and worries and I can rest assured that my mining rigs are not overheating or thermal throttling. Before we sign off, I would like to invite you to join our Discord server, Crypto Kingdom. Amongst the members, you will find a wealth of knowledge and mining experience. We chat about everything that's mining related from rig builds, NFTs, GPUs and much more. The link is in the description below. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them in the comments below. If you have not already seen my full mining garage build video, then I suggest you watch it after this video. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you in the next video.